Greetings and welcome to CRT Gaming Podcast, episode number nine. This is Jones along with Daz Pick and Gohan, and this week we have a treat in store for you this Halloween. Gohan has hand selected the franchise Resident Evil for us to take a look at. Resident Evil. Let me take care of it. Uh, how are you doing this night, Daz Pick? Fantastic. Uh, pumped about talking about this, man. Love the story. Oh, <laughs> There's a lot to talk about. And uh, we recently did a kind of a special, uh, taking a little break in between our uh, first season. And uh, Gohan decided he wanted us to uh, have a look at this horror survival franchise that is seems to just keep going and never stopping. Uh, so, Mr. Gohan, uh, how'd you come about picking this one for us? You know, when we were talking about uh, doing a Halloween you know, month or, you know, theme of Halloween, it was really a tough kind of battle between doing Castlevania or doing this first, but we knew that we wanted to kind of do both of them. Um, and, you know, I really do think, you know, when the words kind of horror come into the context of video games, I think Resident Evil is the series that comes to mind. To, to most gamers um, it's hard to believe you know that uh, I think it's next year is going to be 25 years it's going to be the 25th anniversary of survival horror uh, and uh, there's a there's a lot to talk about here oh yeah it's, it's been around uh, it's it's amazing how long it's been around um, I said it may not have created survival horror but it definitely picked up the baton and, and ran to the finish line with it uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, you know, the Capcom has had a just amazing stable of designers working, you know, for the company since its inception. You know, the Shinji Mikami is the designer that directed the original Resident Evil for the PlayStation. And, you know, I think we could kind of agree that that first game really did kind of lay down the main framework of the series. Oh, yeah, B-movie uh, greatness. Absolutely. I mean, it kind of was what every horror fan wanted. I mean, it took parts of George Romero's uh, Night of the Living Dead and kind of like even the, you know, the, the haunted house of the uh, Evil Dead series. Um, it, it just kind of came together on its own, and it definitely was um, a property that was a love note to its counterpart in cinema you know uh, while the game came out in the in the ni late 90s uh, the inspiration came from uh, resident evil's producer uh, uh his name's uh, tokuro fujirara and he is a designer that's been at capcom for a long time and in the uh, you know late 80s i think uh, 88 i may be wrong on that but he worked on a game called sweet home for the uh Famicom uh, never made its way, you know, to the United States, uh, but a lot of his ideas in Sweet Home really did kind of set the the stage, kind of set the table for uh, what would become the Resident Evil series. And Fujiwara has been at Capcom forever. You know, he worked on the Ghouls and Ghosts series. He worked on Strider. He worked on Bio Commando. He worked on Mega Man. Uh, and he is kind of notoriously a designer who likes to put difficulty into his games. And uh, I think that's why I became a huge fan of his early on, was just his games were hardcore gameplay gamer games, you know? Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a long time coming uh, for us to kind of talk about it. I have very uh, distinct memories about this time in, our, in the three of our lives and what was kind of going on back then. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of, encapsulates a lot of life. That's for sure. <laughs> when you look back at it. Um, yeah, but basically, uh, in doing the special, we all uh, chosen three separate games from the Resident Evil franchise, and basically, let's we'll do it in chronological order. Uh, Mr. Gohan, this is your special, but you happen to chose a uh, Resident Evil One, and 
not the original PlayStation version, but the remake that was done on the GameCube. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, that was uh, when it came time to choose one game uh, for the series. That was the one that I was most excited about going back and revisiting. Yeah, I remember for the the time period that it came out. Um, uh, just because, like, you know, like Resident Evil uh, was so kind of groundbreaking at the moment. Like, not only with its uh, like pre-rendered backgrounds, but just just everything about it was it was just something fresh and new and, and enjoyable. And this kind of you know gave it the fresh kind of makeover that. Uh, it's kind of like all, all makeovers happen in games. That's kind of how you always seen it in your mind's eye. And then when you actually see it that way, it's it's kind of a little jaw dropping for the time. Yeah, yeah. The, the remake of the first game just really was a uh, high watermark for visual fidelity on the GameCube. No doubt about it. You know the. <sighs> seeing all of those awesome pre-rendered backgrounds you know from the original game just kind of there in stark living color with you know really for the time nice somewhat uncompressed video loops that just made the scenes just feel that much more vivid and that much more lifelike i enjoyed the uh it kind of like B movie kind of aspect to Resident Evil a little bit because it had like some real like you know like super cheese cringe acting in it, but I mean it it added to it. I thought uh, <laughs> it, it definitely I, I, kind of made it feel weird. You know, it had its own uh, tone, really. Oh, definitely. I wouldn't have it any other way now. Um, oh no, you no. Know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, kind of thinking about, you know, kind of thinking about the, you know, the time in which this came out. You know, we're talking about entering the world of, you know, '90s 3D graphics at the, the newly emerging CD-ROM format, and I mean, they were just so. It was like this kind of perfect storm, right, of uh, uh, technology and, uh, you know, and uh, kind of a dream to remake you know the the series uh that uh you know inspired it and uh, i mean plus you know with the the red book audio hearing voiceovers in games and yes for good and bad you know both fmv and cgi cinematics with uh, uh some some awesome dialogue you know thrown into the mix you know it's a uh, it, we've come quite a far way but uh, man it really was this kind of awesome combination of timing and technology and an awesome team who wanted to work on the game well one of the best parts that a lot of people don't know about resident evil was the uh one of the music loops in the game and it's pretty pretty awesome and the only other person that i know that it really stands out for would be jones you see jones and i were roommates for a long time and i used to work third shift and i'd come home in, in the early morning and i'd start playing resident evil the problem was i was really tired and i'd fall asleep well i'd fall asleep in an area where i was standing outside and there were no enemies in the game but there were some howling ass dogs. They howled all morning and all night because I had a 5.1 surround system in my bedroom and I cranked that shit up every time that I played anything. And so he would get to listen to dogs howling until he left for work. And it was pretty awesome because I would not wake up for anything but those dogs. I'll just say, <laughs> this, you know, it's funny, I have distinct memories of this as well going over to hang out with you guys and because daz worked so late at night and let's just say daz you are a very 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 sound sleeper <laughs> because <laughs> came over to pick up to go hang out and do whatever the hell we were going to do all i could hear was the low rumble of the outside of the patio in resident evil and every once in a while you'd hear a undead dog howl at the top of its lungs yeah it was scarring um <laughs> I, I actually didn't play i i dabbled with it but i did not like pick it up to play it to beat it uh the first resident evil until resident evil 2 came out 
uh, just because it, it it was just traumatic. That was all I heard. Uh, <laughs> that was all I saw. And it was like, I, well, if I, if I play this, I'll kind of become the game. So um, I'll play something else. And, uh, I do too. remember how kind of put off you were by this, Jones, because I, I remember getting the game and being super excited. I was like, oh, have you played it? Have you played it yet? And you're like, oh, that game, like it was like you tasted something bad. And I was like, really what it was is just PTSD from Daz playing this game 24 hours a day. Well, it definitely was. And just a disclosure uh, to anyone listening, if, if Daz Pick says he played the shit out of something, he, he put, yeah, like that's not a... <laughs> That's an understatement. No, um, we, we can't put too fine of a point on that. <laughs> <laughs> it is an understatement. <laughs> oh, it was so great. I just remember the, the, the glares and the side eye I would get from you when I'd come out. And you're like, do you ever get to turn that shit off? <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you didn't really pick up the game, Jones, until RE2 or, or close close there. there close to it. Not, not to really play it. No, uh, actually, I, I did play it, but I, you know, I just put, you know, in passing, not with an attempt to beat the game or anything like that. Yeah, I, I played it with. I, uh, I would, go ahead. No, I'm just saying because I would hear it or, you know, I would see it or, you know, Dash Pick well, wanted to show me something. So it was kind of like, I kind of was like, it, you know, it was like, a, you know, it, well, you know, he was basically like Ninja, like a streamer or Shroud. You know, before they existed, except it was like a concert. I could just go watch him stream in his room. <laughs> you had your well, own personal streamer. I did. Well, I have my own. <laughs> well, I mean, also remember, uh, we had that other friend of ours that would come over, and he he and I played it religiously, and we were like try it. We were trying to unlock, you know, the rocket launcher and all the things, and try to do it as fast as possible, and. You know, we had gotten it down. We unlocked the rocket launcher and everything, but then we were like, "Oh, how can we do this faster?" And so he ended up bringing a Game Shark over, and we shaved off. I think we knocked it out. We basically had all the items for the second half of the game in the box right at the start. <laughs> so we basically beat the game in like an hour. It was like, yes, basically playing with the debug menu enabled. <laughs> yes, it was awesome. But it was cool because it was there was no there wasn't any blueprint for it we were just basically typing in codes to figure out what it could be and then i was like wait i think i got it this is the one for this item oh shit and so obviously it'll be for this item and this item and then i just dropped everything in the box we did this shit an hour game game shark fishing yes <laughs> man yeah the, the the second game you know when it came out it completely Kind of expanded the narrative you know with the the two lead characters and it was awesome seeing their different points of views and you know in addition to just more storytelling and filling out the world they expanded the player and enemy sandbox quite a bit in resident evil 2. Um, you know, just being able to kind of like you said Daz, there's they did such a good job they did a good job with the first one but they did a really good job with the second one with just oh, hell creating yes. all these things to kind of chase after whether it was new weapons or parts of the game uh or just playing as the extra characters and you know, they, they really, all they really it, it wasn't just a one and done thing like if you really like the game there's definitely something to look forward to in the new game plus Oh my god, dude, we... Again, this other friend, well, let's just call him Yarp. Um, he came over and we, again, we were just trying to figure out the fastest way to do everything. And then we found out that there were unlockable infinite ammo weapons. So like, alright, more than the rocket launcher from the first game? Holy shit, we gotta do this. <laughs> so then we got the submachine gun, figured out how to do that. Cool. Then we found out there's a freaking minigun. It's like, oh hell yes, you just made my dreams come true. <laughs> Get mow down zombies with a minigun that doesn't run out of ammo? Hell yes. And then found out about Hunk and Tofu, which I was never that good at those. He he did the Tofu one, which was incredible. I got through Hunk, which was hard as shit. But man, just having, like you said, something to chase after in that game. Like, I put more time in an RE2 than I did, I think, any of the other Resident Evils. Uh, just because there was so much to do. The, uh... And... Yeah, it was, wasn't oh, the, uh, the, the tofu requirement you had to beat the game using only a knife? Is that no, what no, it was? no. 
you had to it, it was basically with a spoon <laughs> i think you just basically had to finish the hunt game i can't remember honestly um because no i mean uh, the, the whole point of the tofu one was that you just play with a knife you basically play hunks game with just a knife so basically you're not fighting anything you're just running and ducking and weaving that was the whole thing um but I, maybe it, maybe it was man i don't remember it's been a long time <laughs> but he did it i didn't so that's why i definitely don't know i was just like that's that's definitely out of my my range of ability you knock yourself out and he brought his save over and showed it to me and i was like you piece of shit you're playing as a block of tofu <laughs> that's insane and he's stabbing zombies and running away from him it was amazing RE2 definitely had just a, not a whole lot more, but a little bit more of the action bent than the first game. And uh, it kind of made sense. You know, the designer for Resident Evil 2 was uh, Kamiya, uh, and he is a designer at Capcom who later went on to design Devil May Cry and uh, Okami, Beautiful Joe, games like that. Uh, and you can kind of see a little bit of that you know, kind of weapon and action DNA in RE2 versus the first game. For sure. I mean, they added a minigun. <laughs> I mean, that, that kind of says it all right there. That was kind of like they amped up everything, you know, like, like yeah. the graphics got, you know, like a, like improvements. Um, the gore got amped up. The zombies got amped up. Uh, Death by well, liquor, I mean, man. You got liquors. You got the introduction of, uh, Leon S. Kennedy. The man. The man. legend. <laughs> the legend. And, uh, well, even they had a, you know, they took from the whole uh, popularity that they gained from Resident Evil on, you know, creating the first one, um, which, you know, a lot of that is like George A. Romero inspired. He actually did a commercial for part two. So I thought that was kind of a yes, pretty did. cool full, you know, full circle. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, I mean, RE2 made a huge splash, which I don't know. I, I don't really understand why, you know, the, the third game for me, uh, Nemesis, just kind of came and went. Like, it, it just definitely cool, you know, more of the same. If you like the ice cream that you just ate, you're going to like this game. Uh, I, I... But it really did kind of feel to me like a little bit of a expansion pack and they did a good job trying to glue uh the events from the first two games together but you could absolutely kind of see and feel that this was made by kind of a junior team at capcom versus it was totally the first two yeah, yeah i think if it was if it was released now it probably would have been released as dlc for a for a for a game you know triple a it game. was just released now and they didn't release it as <laughs> dlc they released it as a whole game <laughs> yeah that, that should have been cool. dlc <laughs> 60 bucks put it yeah. in my hand yeah negative i bought that game <laughs> that, that's how much i love resident evil you were the one <laughs> i was the one <laughs> But, you know, they kind of had that format, right? You know, they had the the awesome, you know, the, another game that was a huge inspiration to uh, Resident Evil was the PC game Alone in the Dark. Uh, and I had the opportunity to play it, you know, back then. And while Alone in the Dark has a totally different kind of, kind of genre and tone, um, the big inspirational draw was the fixed camera FOV for framing the action and how they use that to kind of rotoscope the 3D models into the environment. Um, I think another thing that was a inspiration, probably for better or worse, you know, is the kind of tank controls that the character had. Um, but I felt like after Resident Evil 3, they kind of did what they needed to do with that and uh you know kind of on the horizon you know, was the sega dreamcast right 1999 i think is when i think yeah, that's when it came out yeah 9999 wasn't that with the the launch date or whatever <laughs> that sounds familiar something happened <laughs> the, the the mayan calendar i don't know maybe but uh <laughs> 
But yeah, I mean, for me, obviously, having a new Sega piece of hardware was definitely something that I was interested in. But as soon as they said that the next kind of main line or main flagship Resident Evil title was going to only be on it, that absolutely made me plunk down the money to reserve one. Oh, yeah. That was another one. Uh, Yarp and I <laughs> played the uh, living shit out of. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I, I know the story on that one got really weird, but yeah, we, we played that one a lot. But it was pretty, pretty on the Dreamcast, man. That was Code Veronica? Yeah. We had a great opening sequence, too. Uh, it was a awesome opening sequence it was just it, it was jill yeah. right it was jill you no not jill claire you're playing as claire on that one yes you're, she had you this were playing this huge claire. action scene at the beginning and she's like blasting people it was ridiculous <laughs> it was awesome <laughs> now, the, with the pre-rendered backgrounds of the earlier games those were like now gone and you could definitely tell that capcom made their real-time 3d engine a big focus, you know, and especially with the Dreamcast. I mean, the Dreamcast really was ahead of its time when it came out in terms of like the hardware that was on it. The the 3D card especially was uh, uh, particularly powerful, and they took what was a kind of like a 2D experience and then brought it over into um, into this new uh, kind of game design. Uh, it'd definitely be the uh, foundation for everything that came after it, you know, as far as the, uh, uh, the, the uh, kind of like the, like the graphical uh, look and feel of the game. Like, uh, I think a lot of that still carries over to today. And like Daz said, the between the awesome pre-rendered intro and the you know, character art, environment art in the game, it kind of felt like this was the first big step into the modern era with just that level of fit and finish and polish, you know, for those, for those assets, you know, but the kind of Resident Evil's layover with Sega was kind of a short lived one. It was, <laughs> they, they immediately got on a commuter, commuter plane to, uh, to Nintendo. And that's when, uh, you really started to see Capcom's titles, Resident Evil titles specifically, become a big draw for Nintendo's new system. Um, and, you know, they, like, to me, had like a few kind of, you know, missteps. You know, uh, I think that the first thing that they released on the GameCube, uh, to my knowledge, was, I think, it, yeah, it was Resident Evil Zero, I think was the first title that was released on the GameCube. Um, I kind of always looked at that one as the weakest link in the series. Um, one of the things that was was kind of cool about RE Zero was kind of calling back to that game Sweet Home. Uh, one of the designs in Sweet Home was this notion that you had a team of adventurers and you would have to kind of break the team into different you know pieces and you would have to kind of hop between characters and i think that was one of the things that they tried to pull over into resident evil zero with you know the two main characters and a lot of the puzzles were based on getting the guy into one spot and getting the girl into another place so that they can unlock you know and then kind of advance the story i do some wonder twin stuff <laughs> yes <laughs> I, don't know, just, I, think, I think the theme just kind of didn't work for at least for me and maybe a lot of re fans is like they're stuck on the train and instead of the you know zombies and you know george romero kind of horror is you're fighting against slug monsters and stuff like that it just i don't know it, it just didn't have the same draw at least or the charm of the previous games didn't have leon man gotta have leon s kennedy <laughs> yes everything requires <laughs> leon s kennedy to be amazing what? Pretty much. Once they introduce him, it was like, okay, you pretty much got to put Leon in your damn game. I guess he's the shit. <laughs> Fortunately, they did. After the next one, uh, is, is Resident Evil Four the next in the chronology of the Resident Evil series, Mister Gohan? Well, uh, they released the remake. You know, the Resident Evil um, 
remake for GameCube that we kind of discussed earlier. And that to me was just something that I loved. I mean, I, I cherished that game when it came out. Um, I had kind of moved away from uh, my uh, friends and family, and uh, I remember playing that game, you know, quite a bit, you know, in, in my new home. And uh, it was just something that uh, was just such a huge, awesome, you know, love note to the first game. And they just added so many awesome, uh, besides just the visual, you know, uh, fidelity with the, the awesome new character art uh, and the you know, video backgrounds, not the, just the static pre-rendered backgrounds, but full video backgrounds. It completely was just the, I thought, the reason to own a GameCube. Uh, but yeah, I mean, really the thing that they showed, you know, to folks was Resident Evil 4. Like I loved Remake because I loved, you know, the first game and I wanted to see it brought into the modern era with great new technology but the thing the carrot that they were totally dangling in front of gamecube owners was resident evil 4 and that was uh jones's game uh this week yeah i went back and uh played resident evil 4 and i, I will say this about it um outside of everything else the gamecube itself seems to have a small handful of games that have just graphically defied everything you thought that system was possible uh, of doing. Uh, and like, I think Sir? Resident Evil 4, like along with the Wind Waker and maybe F-Zero GX were just ahead of their time as far as graphics goes. Um, I think Resident Evil 4 looks great to this day. Um, it, it doesn't look like a 15 year old game, um, if you ask me. Oh, I mean, I completely agree with that. I mean, there's just, yeah, and what is it, Jones, about the GameCube? You know, those those, those titles that you just kind of rattled off there. I mean, they, the years have been kind to them. You know, we, we got a chance to play, uh, you know, this week. I played Remake, Jones played RE4, and Daz played RE2. And man, just watching, you know, these games getting replayed again uh it, it, there's the the years have absolutely been kind to them um and they still hold up i mean this is a especially re4 i mean this game i think at this point is what like 16 years old and i still looks good i mean it definitely can uh, hold its own um against stuff you know i think in in recent memory but at the time i mean it stood head and tail uh, head and shoulders above uh anything else i think on the system uh and okay. kind of They're taking into account some of the competition with you know line. xbox and uh, uh playstation 2 at the time the yeah and this is back when uh if you remember uh, if anyone's listening uh, there used to be something before hdmi inputs <laughs> that were strictly composite so this is when the uh, GameCube had the composite out cable, which lets you play games in uh, 480p. Progressive style, <laughs> maybe. I don't remember Man, how just, amazing it was. That was living in the future back then, Jones. I, it's funny, when we were talking about this uh, series this week, I went through my uh, kind of closet of old games, and one of the uh, cables that I was, you know, trying to organize i pulled it out and it was the composite cable for the gamecube <laughs> oh they were rare they were hard to get like you had to order one or, or just get super lucky <laughs> to find it you're talking um, about the component cable right my god uh, you're the, correct it is yeah the component not composite cable. composite yellow white. The red white and yellow crap right. garbage of old uh, component is red green blue yeah i've still got mine hooked up that's <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago or maybe but some yeah. spider webs on it. <laughs> no, no, no. It gets regular use. <laughs> <laughs> but RE4, I, with that kind of criticism of being a little bit stagnant with the first three games and kind of breaking the mold a little bit with Code Veronica, I feel like all of that came to bear with Resident Evil 4. And 
seeing their real time engine and their lighting engine just describe those those environments and those just awesome looking characters. Um, you know, the it did it did so much, right? Um, it definitely leaned further, you know, into the action. You know, which was which was awesome. Like it was the, uh, you know, to kind of use a movie reference, it was the aliens, you know, action sequel that, uh, you know, just opened the door for uh, a lot more, you know, kind of sandbox gameplay uh, and uh, just using just a whole host of uh, awesome weapons against the uh, the crazy cultists, you know. <laughs> Oh yeah, it was definitely like a departure from the normal because now you weren't dealing with zombies or like the T-Vibers, so to speak. Uh, you were just uh, in this village trying to rescue the president's daughter and uh, they're infected with some type of parasite and it it, it gets tense. <laughs> it definitely does. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, 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 the crazy, it's kind of it's kind of like this kind of Cthulhu kind of uh, inspired bad guys, you know, that kind of erupt out of the uh, erupt out of their human form. It kind of looks like something kind of stolen from John Carpenter's The Thing or, or something like that. Oh, yeah. And it was much more, uh, I think, with the, like the graphical upgrade that came with Resident Evil 4, the violence uh, seemed like it was much more uh, it was definitely amped up, but it was much more kind of surreal and to the point as to just how violent things can happen in this game. Like, you can literally get your head, you know, bitten off by a Cthulhu tentacle, or, you know, <laughs> you explode a man's head and he's still taking about 10 steps while he has a geyser of blood shooting from his neck. <laughs> and this came uh, out of Nintendo. Yeah, and this is on Nintendo. <laughs> I, I know, right? <laughs> That was, uh, yeah, yeah. Who, who knew? <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, you know, some of those uh, errors that they had before, as soon as uh, a little bit more uh, competition came into the market, they, uh, they yeah. kind of changed their tune, you know, and uh, it's, it's funny to think that, you know, just how polarizing it is. It's like, you know, on one hand, you have the very childlike, you know, uh, Wind Waker Kirby. game. And, yeah, Kirby and and uh, Mario Sunshine, and then uh, you know, ultra violent uh, zombie <laughs> horror games. Uh, that kind of the system, to me at least, that when I think about the GameCube, I, I think really about the the first party Nintendo stuff, and really at the time the big flagship Capcom games. And yeah, like I think that uh, while RE4 was awesome, it did kind of. Maybe, uh, especially with the, the latter games, uh, you know, five and six kind of just leaned even further into the, uh, the action side of the game. And uh, I'm definitely, personally, as a, as a longtime fan, uh, very happy to hear that, uh, uh, you know, the new games, uh, you know, RE7 and RE8 are more in line with the more suspense driven you know design that they that the originals had because i i definitely appreciated that it's uh uh the action resident evil to me kind of overstayed its welcome a little bit so it's awesome that they've kind of brought it back to its roots a little bit yeah four seemed to bring the right balance of it where it had both I and mean, it was just enough action but not like so much where six was just a shit show yeah, I mean, you have like, you, you have like, you know, Chris Redfield, like dragon punching, like 40 story, <laughs> like zombie monsters. I mean, so OK, like, and like, let's be real. Off right. train. <laughs> if Leon wants to jump up and jump kick a zombie's head off, that's perfectly fine. But when Chris Redfield is doing a dragon punch with man, fuck that. OK. <laughs> <laughs> it's, at well, that point, it's jump the shark a little. <laughs> I mean, he was, you know. He was roundhouse kicking people, giving them suplexes. You know. <laughs> Don't mess with Leon. Leon is a wreck. You. <laughs> he's not the he's not the rookie from Resident Evil Two. You know, he's he's seasoned seasoned suplexer. <laughs> but uh, it was it was awesome. I'm glad that we were able to kind of have a little bit of a roundtable and talk about the series because it's definitely 
been a part of our uh, our shared uh, gaming history together and uh, especially with uh, it being this time of the year it seemed like the perfect time to uh, kind of hold court on uh, what is kind of one of the defining um, franchises in gaming almost definitely um, quick thoughts on just the uh, kind of teaser trailers that is out uh, Resident Evil 8 Village do you think that's going to be a sequel to 4? Yes. In fact, I thought it was like 4's remake when I saw it. Really? What what makes you guys think that it's... Uh, did, one what, that was, were there things... There, yeah, there, I mean, there's definitely callbacks to Resident Evil 4. Uh, like, I think they referenced what they called uh, whatever it was that was infecting people there. I think there was a call out to that. Um, it, the, the opening shots looked like the opening shots... Uh, when you first get to the village in Resident Evil 4, um, the first shots of the trailer looked that way. And like before they even said village, I was like, oh, this is an RE4 remake. Sweet. And uh, I mean, that's what I think. So. Yeah, it may not be, but that, that's kind of the gist I got from it. It might have something to do with uh, the events in 4. I definitely concur. Yeah, you know, the that trailer... He came out somewhat recently um with the announce of the new uh you know next generation hardware and uh it looked just visually amazing it 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 kind of looked like they brought like werewolves or some i don't know just looked like they were trying to introducing a new type of monster for you to fight against so uh, i'm absolutely uh looking forward to checking that out oh show oh so so yeah, we're going to kind of move over to uh, our uh, usually uh, scheduled programming. Uh, Jones, you know, where are we going? All right, well, we're going back. Kind of had a little bit of time to think about this. And uh, recently, uh, you know, uh, it's been announced that uh, Sega is celebrating its 60th birthday, which is uh, pretty insane uh, <laughs> at, that they've wow. been around this long. Uh, fortunately so we're not that old fortunately we are not thank god we're not that but, old we're close <laughs> but not quite yeah. yeah i think it's the first thing that's come along that we're not older than uh, <laughs> that's like double retro <laughs> it definitely is so i thought in uh you know so maybe help celebrate the uh, 60th birthday of sega we would do kind of a uh, a trilogy where each of us would pick a game that has been developed by sega uh whether for the home system or an arcade but the the key is it has to be developed not um produced or distributed by i want actual sega development and for this um uh it's really hard to choose when you start looking at this list oh i mean it just we're talking you know awesome games as you said that kind of branch both home you know entertainment you know on the consoles uh to just i mean sega sega arcade games are are the stuff of legend so there's a there's a lot here yeah there, there definitely is um and there's there's so many great series um like the, the panzer dragoon series for example um which I was really torn and I wanted to pick, but instead I picked Golden Axe for the Sega Genesis. old school yeah i went old school this time there's a lot of choices and it's rough but that's one of my uh, uh favorite side scrolling beat-em-ups so that'd be a good time to revisit it solid get to get in touch with my dragon lady <laughs> it's, it's all about the dwarf oh man his magic sucks <laughs> yeah. you need the dragon lady <laughs> but yeah dragon lady powerful yeah, <laughs> well, we'll have to figure out if we could uh, co-op this somehow. Probably can on Steam. 
someone's been saying it all week, but I you know, I don't know if anyone's listened. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, gentlemen, when it's uh, your time to choose, good luck, because this list is so deep. <laughs> it's like, well, I want to play this, or I want to play that. You know, there, there's no bad choice really in this list. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a, we got a few weeks to think about it. Yeah, uh, so, so uh, all right. Well, in closing, we'll wrap up this week's episode of CRT Gaming Podcast. Uh, this is Jones, Daspik, and Gohan signing out, and we'll catch you next week. Until next time. Goodbye. Yeah!